Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the production technology of tomato. Uh, in this, we will study about the botany of tomato, about the cultivation practice practices that are required for tomato, the climate and soil requirements. Then we will also discuss about the problems like uh, insect pest or diseases or some other problems of tomato okay so firstly the botany of tomato so botanical name of tomato is solanum lyco persicum okay and it belongs to family solanaceae the chromosome number of tomato is qn is equal to 24 and the flowers of tomato born in racemose sign and flower cluster is known as truss Okay, so flower cluster of tomato is known as truss and the tomato is a self-pollinated crop because it is having hermaphrodite flowers. Okay, so tomato is a self-pollinated crop and belongs to family Solanaceae. Now plant growth habit. Tomato varieties are categorized into two types. The one is determinate, the other is indeterminate. Determinate means the, uh, the, the plants are dwarf in nature or these are bush type. And indeterminate means they grow uh, very large and they are very tall in length. Okay, So determinate type are dwarf varieties and indeterminate are tall varieties or they are, they, they are having tall growth. Okay, so what is the difference between both determinate and indeterminate? So in uh, so determinate in the determinate type of uh, tomatoes, inflorescence occur more frequently on every internode until the terminal ones are formed. And in indeterminate, inflorescence cluster occurs at every third internode. Okay, so in in the determinate type. Inflorescence occur on every internode and in indeterminate type inflorescence occur at every third internode. Okay, and in the determinate type of growth habit, the plant growth stops at a terminal point with a flower cluster. Okay, so at the terminal point there will be a flower cluster and the plant growth will be stopped there. That is known as self-topping. Okay, for example, Pusa early dwarf. Right, so their uh, height will be less, okay? Because uh, at the terminal point there will be a, there will be a flower cluster, and uh, this will allow other branches to grow, but the main branch will stop its growth, okay? So this is also known as self topping, and in case of indeterminate, the main branch continues to grow indefinitely with fruit formation until frost occurs okay so in indeterminate the main branch continues to grow and it just it uh, it stop to grow when there is frost okay so when there is frost in the atmosphere only at that time the main branch will stop its growth otherwise it will continue to grow and uh, example of indeterminate type is Pusa ruby. Then plants of determinate type are compact and their fruit ripen more closely together. And indeterminate the fruits keep setting until frost, right? So as their uh, growth continues and it only stops at the time of frost period and same is with the fruit setting it keeps on setting and it stops only when there is a frost right now origin of tomato tomato was originated in peru so peru is the primary center of origin and secondary center of origin of tomato is mexico and popularly tomato is known as poor man's orange or love of apple so these are the other names of tomato what are these names poor man's orange and love of apple now area and production tomato is grown on an area of 4.58 lakh hectare in india okay and production in india is 74.62 lakhs ton and productivity in india is 16.29 tons per hectare right 
so this is the indian production and the leading states in india which are producing tomatoes these are up karnataka maharashtra haryana punjab and bihar right so uh, in india nearly 4.58 lakh hectare area occupies occupied by tomato okay also what is the importance and the use of tomato tomato is one of the most important protective fruit food it provides vitamin a vitamin c vitamin b1 b2 and many minerals uh, the the fruit of tomato can be eaten raw as well as we can cook it the large quantities of tomato are used to produce soup juice ketchup puree paste and powder and uh, tomato adds color and flavor to the food it is a very good appetizer and uh, its soup is good remedy to prevent constipation and alkaline that is alkaloid that is present in tomato is called tamotin and the colored pigment is known as lycopene okay so red color in tomato is due to the presence of lycopene right and uh, there is a alkaloid present in tomato which is known as tamotin right so uh, pigment is due to lycopene and alkaloid present in tomato is tamotin right so uh, this provides many vitamins minerals um, adds the flavor in our food okay now the climate tomato is a warm season crop okay so it requires long uh, hours long growing season with plenty of sun sunshine and moderate day temperature and the optimum temperature for uh, the cultivation of tomato is 20 to 28 degree celsius tomato is very sensitive to frost so we have to prevent the seedlings from frost under low temperature the plant growth is restricted and fruit setting is low right so it is a warm season crop and uh, its growth will be restricted and fruit setting will also be low if the temperature is low and night temperature is a critical factor in the setting of fruits so night temperature should be in the range of 15 to 20 degree celsius at the time of fruit setting otherwise fruit will not set properly if this temperature is not there and the red pigment formation in the tomato it also depends upon the temperature and the temperature uh, for the development of red pigment should be in the range of 15 to 30 degree celsius and if the temperature range is above this temperature then only yellow pigment will be formed and uh, there will be no uh, red pigment and when temperature exceeds 40 degree celsius no pigment will be formed no uh, not uh, red and nor yellow pigment so no pigment will be formed when the temperature exceeds 40 degree celsius so temperature plays an important role in the development of red pigment in tomatoes red pigment that is lycopene so lycopene Uh, depends upon the temperature range and uh, best color developed at in the range of uh, 15 to 20 degree celsius uh, sorry 15 to 30 degree celsius and when the temperature exceeds 30 degree celsius then only yellow pigment will be formed and when temperature exceeds 40 degree celsius there will be no any pigment formation then soil requirements so tomato can be grown on all types of soil but the soil should be friable and well fertile soil should be uh, there for the tomato cultivation however tomato grows best in light soils ranging from sandy loam to loam okay so all it can be grown on all type of soils but best soils for tomato cultivation are sandy loam to loam soils and soils should be fertile friable okay next is varieties improved varieties of tomato so there are number of varieties and hybrids of tomato so we will discuss only few so first is punjab sona cherry uh, the growth habit of punjab sona cherry is indeterminate and this variety has a shelf life of 5 days and uh, it is suitable for protected cultivation okay so uh, protected cultivation means uh, in the greenhouse or in the cold frames right so this variety is best 
for the production in the protected cultivation so punjab sona cherry can be grown in protected cultivations next is punjab kesar cherry this is again indeterminate type means its growth continues the variety has shelf life of 6 days and suitable for protected cultivation then punjab vartha bahar kaul this type, this is determinate type of variety and uh, this is a resistant to leaf curl virus and suitable for the cultivation in rainy season right so punjab vartha bahar is suitable in rainy season and it is resistant to leaf curl virus that is a disease then punjab gaurav this is again indeterminate type uh, and this variety is suitable for protective cultivation under pollinate house then punjab sartaj this is indeterminate type have growth habit and uh, this variety is tolerant to leaf curl virus and suitable for protective cultivation under poly house then punjab red cherry again indeterminate tolerant to leaf curl virus and suitable for protected cultivation right so these are uh, these are some of the varieties next are the punjab barkha bahar one this is again suitable for the rainy season resistant to leaf curl virus and this is semi determinate in in the growth habit punjab barkha bahar do um, suitable for cultivation during rainy season moderately resistant to leaf curl virus and this this is having determinate growth habit next is punjab ratta this is determinate growth habit the deep red color variety and it is suitable for processing right so because of its deep color deep red color this variety is suitable for processing next is punjab upma this is having growth habit that is a determinate again uh, having deep red color and because of the deep red color it is suitable for processing suitable for fresh market as well as for processing next punjab nr7 variety it is having a determinate growth habit and this is resistant to root knot and nematode and resistant to fusarium wilt so this variety is resistant to nematodes as well as fusarium wilt next the variety is the punjab shuhara this is determinate growth habit and fruit is pear shaped okay next are the hybrids so first hybrid is th1 having growth habit of determinate type and it has better shelf life and can be transported to distant markets and it is moderately resistant to leaf blight so the varieties and the hybrid that we we have discussed uh some of the varieties are resistant to some diseases some of the varieties are uh, suitable for processing purpose some of the varieties are suitable for uh, fresh market and some of the varieties are suitable to grow in the rainy season right so you have to keep in mind the characteristics of each variety right now seed rate so seed rate if we want to grow uh, tomatoes in one acre so we require only 100 g of seed that will be sown in the nursery first and then the seedlings will be transplanted in the main field so we require 100 g of seed that will be transplanted in one acre right so for the production of tomatoes we need to sow nursery first so nursery can be sown in two marlas that is 50 square meter area to transplant one acre right so if we want to trans, uh, transplant the seedlings in one acre we have to sow nurseries in a, uh, an area of 50 square meters now sowing time uh, there are two planting times one is winter planting and then uh, other is the february planting so for winter planting sowing should be done in october and transplanting in november december right and uh, if we are planting the tomatoes in february then we have to sow the seed in end of november and then uh, the seedlings are transplanted in february so because uh, this this take more time in the november planting 
uh, member sowing seeds take more time to transplant because there in at that time the temperature in the environment is very low and we have to cover the seedlings cover the nursery beds with the polythene sheets so that we can save the seedlings and seed from the frost right so to protect the seedlings from frost the beds are covered by polythene sheets or sarkanda patchy right uh next is uh, planting in rainy season or in autumn so there are uh, few varieties that are suitable for planting in the rainy season these varieties are punjab varkha bahar 4 punjab varkha bahar 1 punjab varkha bahar 2 and uh, their transplant so sowing can be done in the second fortnight of july and transplanting can be done in second fortnight of august right so uh, if you want to grow uh, tomatoes in rainy season these varieties should be taken and uh, uh, nursery sowing should be done during the second fortnight of july and the transplanting should be done in the second fortnight of august and at the time of planting at the time of transplanting uh, we have to transplant two seedlings per hill right so at one place we have to Uh, take two seedlings because if one seedling dies the other will grow right now nursery raising how nursery raising is done in tomato so firstly we have to prepare nursery bags right so nursery bags are prepared and the length uh, width of a nursery bag should be 1.5 meter and these bags should be high raised bags they should be uh, raised bags and the height of bags should be 20 cm right so well prepared nursery bags the fine nursery bags should be prepared and uh, in the nursery bags we have to mix well rotten farm yard manure and uh, to control some of the diseases these nursery bags should be drenched with formalin and uh, we can apply the solution of formalin at the rate of 4 to 5 liters per square meter then cover these bags with a plastic sheet or tarpaulin for about 48 to 72 hours right so uh, firstly we have to prepare the bags then we mix well rotten farmyard manure then drench the bags with formalin and after drenching the bags with formalin we have to cover the bags with the plastic sheets for about 48 to 72 hours right then turn the soil in bags once a day for 4 to 5 days to eliminate eliminate formalin so uh, then so that the formalin effect can be eliminated this effect cannot should not be taken by the seeds so we have to turn the soil once a day for about 4 to 5 days then before sowing uh, we should treat the seed with captain or theorem at the rate of 3 g per kg of seed then after treatment of seed these seeds are sown in the nursery bags and the depth of sowing should be 1 to 2 cm and the spacing of between the seeds should be 5 cm right then when the seedlings become 15 to 20 cm tall in 4 to 6 weeks then these uh, seedlings become ready to transplant so when they uh, attain a height of 15 to 20 degrees celsius that at that time uh, we can uplift the seedlings we can we have to wrap them in wet paper and uh, we can transplant the seedlings in the main field right so this is all about the nursery raising and transplanting so at the time of nursery raising firstly we have to prepare a very uh, well nursery beds we have to mix farmyard manure formalin and then uh, formalin to avoid the uh, effect of formalin we have to turn the soil once a day then treat the seed seeds with captain or theorem and uh, sow that seed in the nurseries and after 4 to 6 weeks when the height of seedlings become 15 to 20 cm then these seedlings are transplanted in the main field right so this is uh, all about the nursery raising and transplanting now spacing once we transplant the seedlings so we have to maintain a spacing between the uh, plants and between the rows 
so the spacing for the dwarf varieties should be 75 by 30 cm 75 cm uh, distance should be from row to row and 30 cm distance from plant to plant right so the row to row distance should be maintained that is 75 cm for the dwarf varieties and uh, for the rainy season varieties there there are indeterminate type of varieties the distance between the rows should be 120 to 150 cm and the plant to plant distance should be 30 cm okay and uh, manures and fertilizers so after we transplant the seedlings in the main field we have to provide all the nutrients to our plants so that they can grow properly so uh, firstly before transplanting we have to add 10 tons of well rotten farmyard manure in the main field right and the other requirements of tomato crop are nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so nitrogen should be applied in two supplets the at the rate of 60 kg so 60 kg of nitrogen should be applied in two supplets and the, the phosphorus phosphorus the quantity of phosphorus required for the tomato crop is 25 kg and uh, the quantity of potassium is also 25 kg so for nitrogen we can use a, uh, urea for phosphorus we can use single super phosphate and for potassium we can use units of potash then weed control so weed population is always there when we are growing any kind of vegetable crops we have to control weeds manually or by applying some chemicals herbicides right so uh, firstly we uh, hoeing hoeing can be done in tomatoes and uh, we can apply storm 30 ec at the rate of 1 liter and this can be followed by one hoeing okay so first application of herbicide storm 30 ec and then it should be followed by one hoeing right and uh, uh, some other weedicides can also be sprayed like senfor okay so these weedicides should be applied 3 to 4 days before transplanting on the prepared beds so these weedicides should be applied before transplanting right and once this crop is transplanted after that only hoeing can be done to control the weeds weed population next there are some growth regulators which are used to increase the yield of tomato so there is a, uh, a booster that uh, growth regulator that is known as wipul booster so wipul booster at the rate of 1 ml per liter of water can be sprayed to increase the yield of tomato okay then this spray can be repeated uh, five times during the uh, whole cultivation of tomato at a fortnightly interval so first foliar spray after transplanting should be started a week after transplanting okay and uh, uh, with with the spray of wipul booster the uh, yield of the tomatoes can be increased up to 16 to 18 percent and about 12 percent in the february transplanted crop okay so if that crop was transplanted during november uh, there will be increase in the yield uh, by 16 to 18 percent and if the crop is transplanted during february the there will be increase in the yield by 12 percent right so wipul booster can be used can be sprayed to increase the yield of tomato next irrigation so irrigation is very important for uh, every crop for every uh, for all the vegetables fruits so if we provide the regular irrigation then our fruits or vegetables will have a good size okay and have good quality so first irrigation in case of tomato should be done immediately after transplanting and subsequent irrigations after 6 to 7 days during summer months and uh, after uh, at an interval of 10 to 15 days during winter months right so during summer months the interval is small 6 to 7 days 
after six to seven days we should irrigate the field properly and during the winter months we should irrigate the field at an interval of 10 to 15 days right so total number of irrigations required by tomato crop are 14 to 15 next is harvesting okay harvesting and uh, care after harvesting and marketing of uh, tomatoes so how all these operations should be regulated so uh, at the time of harvesting we should recognize the maturity level okay stage of maturity in the fruits of tomato so there are different stages at which we can harvest the tomato fruits so these stages are immature green stage mature green stage turning stage that is also known as breaker stage pink stage hard ripe stage and overripe stage so all these stages having different purposes when we harvest the tomatoes at these stages so if we harvest our tomatoes at immature green stage so at this time the fruits can be transported over a long long distance right so if we have to transport the tomatoes over a very long distance then we have to harvest tomatoes at immature green stage right and uh, for long distance markets we have to harvest the tomatoes at mature green stage then for local markets the fruits of tomato are harvested at turning stage which is also known as breaker stage or at pink stage and the hard ripe stage is also recommended for harvesting and for sending the fruits for the local markets and overripe fruits of tomatoes are harvested for processing purpose okay so after harvesting pre cooling pre cooling should be done at 13 degrees celsius okay pre cooling means the fruits of tomatoes or fruits of any of the vegetable or uh, fruits are pre-cooled so that we can remove the field heat means once we harvest the crop from the field at that time the temperature of the crop temperature of our commodity is very high so we have to lower down that temperature and so to lower down that temperature pre-cooling is done right so pre-cooling is done in tomatoes at 13 degrees celsius after harvesting so pre-cooling is done uh, uh, the method of pre-cooling is by we can dip our fruits or vegetables in the cold water there are some many other methods uh, what uh, we can spray some water over the vegetables we can keep the vegetables in the water or iced uh, pre-cooling method is also there vacuum pre-cooling cooling method is also there so methods are different for the different crops right so pre-cooling is done after harvesting to remove the field heat right then packaging of tomatoes is done in the molded trays followed by racking with shrink or cling films that can extend its marketing period with acceptable quality for six days right so packaging of tomatoes is done so uh, in in different packaging materials like shrink films in cling films in the molded trays and this can extend the storage period or marketing period of the fruits next is seed production so as a tomato is a self pollinated crop so isolation distance for seed production of tomatoes is 50 degree 50 meters isolation distance means the distance between the two fields for example in one field we have uh, sown one variety of tomato for example punjab Varkha, bahar four variety has been sown in one field and in other field some other variety like punjab ratta variety is grown in the other field so between these two fields there should be a distance of 50 meters right so that the varieties cannot be mixed okay so isolation distance for seed production of tomato is 50 meters and uh, once we grow the crop for uh, seed production we have to inspect the field regularly so minimum three inspections should be done so first inspection at the time of vegetative phase 
second inspection at the time of flowering and fruiting stage and third inspection before harvesting of fruits that means so when we visit the field when we inspect the field we have to notice down that there is no any attack of insect pest of or of any diseases and uh, there is no any uh, malformed fruits so if there is if we see that there is any defect in the fruits or there is any attack of the diseases so th those diseases plants are roped out and uh, taken out of the field right so that's why inspections are very necessary then seed of the uh, tomatoes are extracted from the ripe fruits okay and uh, extraction of seed can be done by two methods the one is fermentation method and the other is acid method right so extraction can be done by two methods so first is the fermentation method so once we harvest the fruits fruits are harvested and then these are crushed these fruits fruits are crushed and these are kept so that they can ferment for about 1 to 2 days so crushed fruits are allowed to ferment for 1 to 2 days and after the fermentation is completed these crushed fruits are put into the water and the pulp of the fruits will be float and the pulp and skin will be float in the water and seeds will be settled down in the bot at the bottom okay so we can take those seeds and we can then dry up the seeds and uh, we can store the seeds for uh, next sowing okay so fermentation method means crush the fruit and keep it as such for one to two days and after that we have to uh, put the, the those fruits into water and uh, pulp and the uh, skin of the tomato fruits will be float and seeds will be settled down okay and then those seeds are collected and they are dried in the shade and then these seeds are packed for storage the next method is acid method so uh, seed extraction can also be done by uh, using commercial hydrochloric acid at the rate of 10 ml 100 ml so 100 ml of uh, hcl is taken and uh, this is mixed with the 14 kg of crushed tomato fruits so we have to take 14 kg of tomato fruits that are crushed and uh, we can add 100 ml of hydrochloric acid in the 14 kg of tomatoes and these seeds are separated out from the pulp within half an hour which may be cleaned dried and packed okay so these are the two methods one is the fermentation method and other is acid method then plant protection of tomatoes so plant protection means the uh, there are attacks of insect pests many of the diseases also harm the tomato fruits and there are some disorders also in the tomato fruits so uh, some of the insects that attack on the tomato are there so first is aphid the scientific name is aphis gossifi and uh, the other is white fly the scientific name of white fly is memesia tabaci to control the aphids and white fly we can spray melatheon uh, at the rate of 400 ml right so we can control aphids and white fly by applying melatheon and the fruit next uh, insect is fruit borer fruit borer uh, harm the fruits by sucking the saps of the fruits they they cause holes in the fruits and uh, rotting of fruits also there in case of the attack of fruit borer so scientific name of fruit borer is helicoverpa armigera and to control fruit borer we can uh, spray the field thrice with the uh, some of the chemicals like indocarb sevin hexavin right so once the we have sprayed the field with these chemicals we have to wait for 3 3 days for uh, uh, picking of the fruits right next there are some diseases which attack on the tomato crop these are early blight late blight and damping off so early blight the scientific name is alternaria solani and uh, uh, 
there are uh, dark brown spots on the leaves and uh, the leaves become yellow and there are also shedding of leaves if there is a tag of early blight on the tomatoes the fruits are also get affected because of the early blight and they show dark circular areas on their skin that is followed by rotting to control early blight we should obtain the seeds from the healthy fruits only okay and uh, we should always treat the seed before sowing with captan or serum and uh, we can spray the field with indofil to control early blight right then uh, late blight that is phytophthora infestans the symptoms of late blight are water soaked areas on the leaves and stems right the fruits are also get affected due to light, late blight and the crop uh, destroyed if the rains occur after february so to control late blight we should spray the uh, same chemicals the same uh, chemicals like uh, uh, indofil can be sprayed okay then damping off damping off cause pre and post emergence death of the seedlings in the nursery beds so this disease is uh, uh, very harmful during the nursery period right so to control damping of the seed should be treated with captan or serum at the rate of 3 g per kg of seed right so these are the diseases this is the attack of early blight that uh, the there are dark spots on the leaves of the tomatoes Uh, next uh, leaf curl virus leaf curl virus virus uh, the growth of the plants will be stunted and there will be rolling of the leaves crinkling of the leaves and plant will bear very few flowers and fruits and this leaf curl disease is transmitted by white fly okay so white fly uh, to control this disease we have to control white fly insect right so to control rogue out all the affected plants and we have to uh, control white fly by spraying rogor or metasistol if we want to control this disease then mosaic virus mosaic virus is transmitted through seed as well as it is transmitted by aphids so aphids should be controlled to avoid the mosaic virus attack so because of mosaic virus the leaves of the plants are get affected and uh, there are raised dark green areas there is distortion of the leaves and uh, malformation of the leaves right so to control uh, mosaic virus uh, collect the seeds from the virus free plants okay so at the time of seed collection only virus uh, seed should be collected only from the virus free plants avoid unnecessary touching of plants right so uh, touching of plants should be avoided and uh, spray with the insecticides uh, like uh, rogor or metasistol to control aphids right next is root knot nematodes root knot nematodes uh, uh, form uh, formed in the roots of the tomatoes and they form swellings swellings and galls in the roots and nematodes survive in soil for a long long period so to control root knot nematodes we should throw nematode resistant varieties like nr7 punjab nr7 in the infested fields and uh, solidize the area with the water saturated nursery beds now there are some physiological disorders in tomato so first is blossom and rot blossom and rot means rotting of fruits starts at the blossom end of the fruit so this is due to the deficiency of magnesium and calcium and to control this order the fruits should be sprayed with the calcium chloride at the rate of 0.5% at the fruit development stage and uh, apply balanced irrigation and ensure proper staking in case of uh, blossom and rot next is cracking of fruits so cracking of fruits uh, at the stem end occurs due to the deficiency of boron and uh, when there are long dry spells followed by heavy irrigation at 
this is the main reason of cracking so deficiency of boron and dry spells long dry spells when there are, when there are long dry spells and we after a long dry spell we immediately irrigate the field then cracking of roots occurs so uh, we can apply borex at the rate of 20 to 30 kg and soil application can be done of borex and uh, application of proper irrigation at right stage is also very important to avoid cracking of roots right next is sun scald so sun scald when the fruits are exposed to the sun directly for a longer period and when there is a very so extreme heat period and fruits are exposed uh, at the time of ripeness so sun scald the white or gray color appearance occurs on the yellowish or red fruits so more sun intensity in, uh, intensity cause injury to fruits in May and June during peak heat period. And the grow varieties such as heavy, uh, th th that are having heavy foliage, okay, so that heavy foliage can cover the fruits properly and uh, this will give them protection against the direct sun rays, right. Then puffiness or hollowness, sometimes you can see that uh, the, there is, uh, the fruits are hollow inside right or that is also known as puffiness so outer wall continues to develop but the growth of remaining internal tissues is retarded and uh, because of which the fruits are light in weight and they lack firmness and they are partially filled and this is because of number of factors like sometimes due to high temperature due to low temperature due to low soil temperature and high soil moisture conditions so the, these are the factors the climatic factors only that is the low or high temperature or a low soil temperature or high soil moisture these are the predisposing factors of puffiness and to control puffiness or hollowness in tomatoes we can apply 4 cpa or cppu these are the chemicals to control puffiness so this is all regarding the production technology of tomatoes right so thank you